Well, hi there. It's Sandy Alnock, and I have a rather crazy page for you today. This one is finger painted, believe it or not. And it was inspired by the verse. I really went to this particular passage in verse 28 and going forward. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But look up a few verses before that, verse 25, where he says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. And as I read this whole chapter in context over and over, looking at that that I will give you rest verse, because that's kind of been the space I've been in. I just kept getting hung up on verse 25, because, you know, approaching him like a child is what we're supposed to do. So I got out some paints. These are some new paints I bought. They're just acrylic paints. You can use any kind of brand, but I thought these were nice big tubes, so I could have some fun with them. And I'm just going to kind of show you a few things that I did along the way here. I started by just sketching some flower shapes. I love those kind of big tall flowers, you know, that that come on like one big stem and then I wanted to have a couple of round flowers, maybe some little teeny things at the bottom and some grasses and stuff. I didn't really have a super big plan in my head. I just wanted to do something. And I have a little bit of each of these four colors. There's other colors, of course, in that little set I showed, but I thought I'd start with these. I had no idea how this was going to work when I tried it. So bear with me as I go through this and I'm kind of learning how to finger paint again. Uh, I had baby wipes off camera so I could constantly be cleaning my fingers and not make more messes than expected. Some of this I found that I was having trouble moving the color because it was too thick. So if you're going to do something like this, Normally, I do this kind of work with a baby wipe rather than my fingers because it adds moisture to the paint. So every once in a while, you will see me get a little spray bottle and spritz things just to loosen up that paint a little bit. But really, I'm just going around the shapes that I drew so that I could create those tall kind of cone flower shapes. And then I was going to add some color to them. I wanted to make them kind of purple, but I mixed the red and the blue together trying to see if I could come up with something that looked like a purple and it was green. Well, you know why? And I'll explain a little color theory here. That red is a very warm red. That red has a lot of yellow in it. So if you use something more like a pink, you're going to be able to mix pink and blue and get a purple. But since it has so much of that red in it, it's not going to work really well to make purple. So I'm not able to make a purple out of the colors I have in this little set. Instead, I'm mixing kind of peachy colors, so I'll do some oranges and reds in this, and I mix the white with that that red to try to make something pinkish, but it came out more like a pale orange. So that's how you know that there's a lot of yellow in it, because there's just no way that you can make an actual pink from this. So if you're looking for colors to get, and you get just a regular warm tomato red like this, just know there's going to be some yellow in it. And I'm just kind of mixing back and forth, and I am speeding this up because this page took me a couple hours to do. It was a rather long process to do all this, but I thought you'd enjoy seeing the finished product, even though I don't expect anybody to follow this as a crazy tutorial. So now I'm mixing some yellow and red together to make different oranges to start to add little blossoms onto those kind of big cone types of shapes and turn them more into flowers. And the cool thing about acrylics as opposed to other mediums like watercolors and stuff, is that you can add color on top of things. You don't need to use any page prep because basically page prep in its kind of rawest explanation is a basic acrylic covering over the page. So any of this paint you come come up with is going to act as as it were as page prep. There are some colors you might use that could bleed through if you have certain kinds of brands. I don't really know that, so I'm not going to say that 100%, but none of this bled through. I had a completely white page on the other side when it was all done. For my big flowers, I wanted them to be white flowers, but I wanted to have some color sort of undergirding them 
and you'll see how the flowers develop as I continue to paint them. Uh, but I started putting some of this kind of light blue color underneath of them. Trying to figure out how I was going to do this was was just a challenge in general. <laughs> this whole thing was was a great experiment, but it was a fun experiment. And as I was doing this, I felt very childlike. Just getting messy with my fingers was sort of fun. I almost wish that I had the bravery to like get all of my fingers dirty and just kind of really go for it. But I, I was very tidy with it. I kept wiping my finger off and cleaning things up because I was trying to be under control like I am. So here's where I started putting the white of the petals in. And you can see there's just that little bit of the blue showing underneath. So I, I gave myself that as the shell of the flower and then started adding the color on top and then blending in some blue because whenever you have something that's white, it often has much more color in it than you'd expect. And by the time this is done, I'm going to add even more color to this that will probably scare you. So make sure you're sitting down and watch the rest of this crazy video. So add some more white to this other flower, mixing up kind of some different colors to put toward the center so I can have that, that center of the flower kind of fall back into space and because it's going to be darker in the middle right around the little yellow portion in the middle. And then start adding some colors in there. I knew I wanted some red, but I wanted to give it a little time to dry before I added more yellow on top. So I decided to add a cloud up there in the sky, which I didn't like, and I kept trying to rub it out and fussing around with it. was not pr particularly pleased with that little sad cloud up there, but there you go, right? So next, I added a little bit of black onto my palette. I didn't want this to get really heavy, but I wanted some kind of accents of some sort in here. So added a little bit of the black to the green and, and to some of the other colors to try to make a darker shade. Because when I had this set of just these basic colors, there's really not a lot you can do if you don't mix. So I'm mixing kind of a darkish, reddish kind of color, but it turned out kind of weird brown mixing the red with that black. So I kind of struggled with painting over top of some of those sections. But again, with acrylic, you can paint over top of something that comes out terrible. Just wait for it to dry and then throw some more paint over on top. And all that green down there at the bottom that just seems kind of heavy. So I added some little Queen Anne's lace by just tapping in little little tiny flowers with my finger and the, uh, the white paint just to add some detail. But all this was still not making me happy. I, I still felt like I needed to do something. I did finally get the yellow in the centers of the flowers, but now it looked like two giant uh, eyeballs looking at me. And I wanted to change something up so I didn't have two eyeballs staring at, at me out of the page. So I started trying to figure out how to mix colors to darken this flower at the bottom. I thought if one flower then was curved towards you, so the sun was only hitting that top outside edge, then the inside of the flower would have more color in it. So I started putting darker color in there and it was actually kind of working. I, I was just playing around with it to see what, what it would take to make this happen. The other flower, I wanted it to look like it was facing upward toward the sun. So it was going to have more white in it. And this other flower was just going to be darker as the shadow was cast across it. And it just had that, that white edge around the top. So there you go, my crazy page that I was just pondering being childlike and doing finger painting. And you can do flowers that are not as elaborate like as this. Just take a piece of scratch paper and figure out what kind of flowers your finger can make. What kind of shapes can you make? And you can make all kinds of really simple ones. You don't have to do anything as complex as me, but it's kind of fun to just play. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.